The Prime Minister declares Black History Week officially open. The Chief Elections Officer says the national ID cards will be the best form of identification. And Mass Dominic 2014 officially opened last weekend. Thanks for joining us on another edition of National Focus. I'm Jana Hector. And I'm Mervyn Matthews. Stay with us for details of the headline stories and others coming up right after this. Dominica is blessed with an abundance of water, but getting it to your home is an expensive venture. You have a responsibility to conserve water, to use it wisely. Remember the old adage, you never miss the water till the well runs dry. Think water. Think life. Thank you for staying with us. Chief Elections Officer Stephen LaRock is hoping that funding can be made available to facilitate the processing of multi purpose ID cards in the out districts. As of February 5th, 2014, 2,600 public officers have been enrolled in the MPID system. Larock says although the system is centralized in Roseau, he is hopeful that plans will be made for the smooth implementation of MPID cards for all nationals across the country. Larock says for now, the main purpose of the national MPID card will be to facilitate the voting process. Since the card's main purpose will be for voting, Larock added that eventually owning a card may be mandatory. It is advised that everyone gets an ID card. Um then the commission has taken a decision that when they have satisfied that everyone who um, is entitled to a card has gotten one, it will become mandatory for election purposes. So um, at least for the persons in the, in the um, voting age, it will become mandatory for them eventually. The multi-purpose identification card will also serve other very important purposes, including easing travel among OECS nationals. According to LaRock, the Electoral Office is also working with the Dominica Social Security, which has expressed interest in using the card to replace the existing Social Security card. The Chief Elections Officer also says this card will eliminate the need to present several forms of identification to private sector institutions such as banks. The MPID card will also contain all the necessary information about the individual, including fingerprints, and therefore several forms of ID will not be necessary to establish a person's identity. As far as the Chief Elections Officer is concerned, the MPID card will be the best form of identification. One of the uses of it will be, of course, most of it is for election purposes. Um, the other one is um, to be used for other, in the private sector. We are having discussions with the private sector and they have been um, enthusiastic in getting them involved because um, you can use that when you go, go into negotiate in the private sector for the banks or the other fast cash or whatever it is, they usually ask for two and three ID, ID cards. But when, with that ID card, they will be able to access the information from of the card on the, system, on the internet to verify who you are. In the case of a driver's license, what they have, just saying that you are authorized to drive in the state. It's not a proper identification. Whereas with the MPID, they have your photograph, your fingerprint, and other information to provide um, your marital status if you're single and you have changed. All that will be on the system on the back end, so that when the card is accessed by whoever it's being used for, they will get information that whoever that person is, is who they claim to be is that person because the card is gives an opportunity for every person who en who's enrolled they get a number that uniquely identifies them as for security larock says the system is very secure and although personal data about an individual will be available in the system parameters will be set to limit visibility to those who will be validating ids the system is quite secure i must say and the, it, like for instance if the bank has asked will accept using that card. The information that they will get is what we at the electoral office authorize them to get. They will not see everything. Um, 
the, some people are concerned about your fingerprints, and a lot of you have looked at your fingerprints will be well protected, and it will, the only way the electoral office can release your fingerprints is a court order. So far, the government of Dominica has spent approximately $2.4 million in the implementation of the National Multipurpose Identification Card. In more news, Honorable Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt was invited to declare Black History Week open at a ceremony held at the public library on Monday. Franklin Georges, a Dominican who has lived in England for over 30 years, has supported the public library for the last three years. He will again this year add to the collection of Black History books at the public library. Georges is passionate about his Black heritage and wants students and Dominicans alike to appreciate Black history and be re-educated about their ancestry. There are three words I would like you to think about this month and the rest of your life. One of them is assimilation, the other one is evaluation, and the most important one is re-education. George is also a strong advocate for black history to be taught in schools across Dominica. Brothers and sisters, I have brought these books to the library. I don't want them to stay there and grow on the shelf. I also know in conversation with the Prime Minister and the former President that we are going down the road to do something. These books I donated is just like an iceberg. I have something at home which I want to give my country one day, and I hope when we do, we should have one of the best black history sections of libraries in the Caribbean. He is calling for more Dominicans to become friends of the library and make contributions to promote reading on the island. The judges made presentations to the Honorable Prime Minister and also the Wesley High School. On behalf of the principals, staff, and students of the Wesley High School, we would like to thank you for the donation of history books that we will put into good use. We are indeed intrigued by the topic of history and especially the concepts of black history. So once again, we look forward to the introduction of black history being taught in schools. Again, thank you very much. The Prime Minister Skerritt has commended judges for his generous contributions and support to the library over the years. Let me, on behalf of the government and people of Dominica, and the Minister of Education in particular to thank Mr. Georges for his most generous gift uh, to all of us in Dominica, uh, giving us books to read, making them accessible to us is an important form of national contribution. And Mr. Georges, through his own pride and passion uh, for black history and his desire to see all of us in the country, irrespective of our race, have an appreciation for the contribution which black people have made not only to Dominica's development but to the development and advancement of the world over. The library has planned various activities throughout the week including lectures on black inventions and black history. Friday is dedicated to the history of black music. Chief Librarian Magdalene Robin made a special appeal to the public to engage in activities carried for the week and also make use of the material available at the public library. We hope that the material provided will be used by our clients, but more particularly, we hope that those who loan them will understand that the library's collections are for the use of the public at large and not just for a few. We therefore encourage everyone to use the material provided, but remember that we all need and want to be informed, so read and return them, that others may have the opportunity to inform themselves. When the Prime Minister and other members of government met to talk with Trafalgar residents about the National Employment Program, they also discussed education and employment in general. On that subject, the nation's leader, Prime Minister Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, reiterated that his government continues to see youth development as a priority. Honorable Skerritt spoke of the Dominica State College, which has received significant attention from his government. According to Honorable Skerritt, talks are being held with the administration of the Dominica State College to make it easier for partial dropouts to return to college. The Prime Minister is proud of his government's achievements in the field of education. One of the highlights of these achievements is an 80% increase in the number of high school graduates with access to a Dominica State College education. The objective of the meeting was to explain the workings of the National Employment Program and to invite applications from youth of the Roseau Valley. 
It was revealed by the finance minister that Clare Harbour, which is the largest employer of young persons on the island, may partner with government and the NEP to provide employment for even more persons. We are in discussion with Clare Harbour to see how many of the people who have registered with the NEP that they can take first. And we expect them to take a significant number. Following presentations by the Prime Minister, the Employment Minister and the Executive Director of the Dominica Employment and Small Business Support Agency, residents were invited to ask questions. One resident who identified himself as Moransi voiced his support for the National Employment Program. Prime Minister, I'm very supportive in what you want to do for the young people. What I come here to tell them is to take it very, very seriously. Make sure the people from the valley who come are serious and they are ready. Don't take the government money and waste it. Put it into good use. Give it to the young people who are ready. The Prime Minister encouraged the employed to work hard to ensure their place in the work environment after placement. I want to say to our young people that when we get engaged in this program, you must be diligent, you must come to work because it is how you behave that will cause the program to be successful. Because I have met many employers who told me, boy, these, people are, these young people are very good. Because my position is this. In many respects, our young people have kept their side of the bargain. They went to school, they have done well, and they are back, or they completed state college. We owe it to them as a country to keep our side of the bargain by creating opportunities for them to make a way, to make a living and to develop a way of life for themselves. And this is why we will ensure and ensure that at the same time I am getting my salary, at the same time Dr. Mark is getting his salary, those who are engaged under the program will get his salaries at the same time. Tourism Minister Honorable Ian Douglas was a part of that discussion last week. He responded to a suggestion that arrangements be made to teach young persons the skill of craft making during the off season. We want to encourage more um, French visitors because you know a lot of French visitors come during the summer, July, June, July, August, and a lot of them come into the Roseau Valley area because of Trafalgar Falls and again the hot spas. So we want to work with you all so that the young people can get trained to do our local craft and to get involved in the tourism industry because the authentic Dominican locally made craft is what the visitor and you, you're in the vending trade, so you know, that is what they go for. The Rosa Valley is a popular destination for tourists during the on season, which means seasonal employment for many persons. Meanwhile, at that event, constituency representative for the area, Honorable Dr. John Colin McIntyre, used the opportunity to speak to his constituents about the development of the Rosa Valley. One of those was employment. The minister, who is also responsible for employment, told Trafalgar Shawford Faulkany residents that additional arrangements are being made to involve even more youth in gainful employment. What we do, we spend a lot of money on a yearly basis, paying our roads, tons of money. What we'd like to do is to get our young men here, and we met a few of them already, where we can partner with you for our NEP. We can provide the brush cutters, the wheelbarrows, the spades, and different things where we can clean our roads nicely, the side of the roads, and landscape that road right down to town. We have a brand new highway. We have suffered a little bit on it in terms of the, um, the last mudslides we had here, but we will fix it up. And we right now, government, what we are looking at is trying to find monies to fix our roads, because we are a country, we are challenged seriously, and this is something that we suffered recently. So this is going to happen. But under this program, our landscaping program, a lot of our young guys can find themselves gainfully employed in taking care of the roads in terms of beautification, you know, your little brush cutter, your, your, your wheelbarrow and whatnot. And our ladies, what we'd like to do for our ladies as well too, those of our ladies here would like to go out in the mornings and contribute to this program as well too. You can come out in the mornings, you do your little exercise, 
you can help him clean up the place in terms of your style room, like adopting a mile type program. You come and you pick up all the little, you know, little rubbish, little things around you, bag it up, and we can get it out. And we will pay you to do that. In addition to employment and training opportunities being created for Dominica's youth, the Labour Party government continues its education drive to educate as many Dominicans as possible. Honorable Dr. Colin McIntyre sees the advantages of such opportunities. He feels strongly that, quote, education is the only way out of poverty, end of quote. I pride myself on having got the opportunity to go to school. Of course, I played a little bit sometimes in school, but I kept focus. We all play sometimes. But I would like you, those of you here who have that chance, and parents, I want you to urge your students to maintain this program. Get back into school and let's, let's, let's get this educational program going because that's the only, only way. Honorable McIntyre used the forum to talk with constituents about geothermal energy development project in the Roseau Valley. Honorable McIntyre told residents that the development of an alternative source of energy is the way to go for the island. When you pay your light bills coming just now, the drought season, the, the ampule surcharge, is going to be dangerous, it's going to cripple us. We have to find a way. The company is privatized by the, um, under the European government. It's privatized, we know that. They're sold. We have no control over it. And there's an automatic internal rate of return there that they must make that profit before they come to you know. That means they have to take it out before, they, before anything is done. So nothing can be passed on to you. We, have not, we don't own that company. But the resource we have right now, the resource that we are pursuing, we own it. And it should partner with us to hold it. And I promise you we'll do it properly, we wouldn't do it in any way to hurt you. The people of Lily Valley, your concerns, you came there, you raised your concerns, we addressed them, and we'll continue to move forward. So I wanted to make sure I mentioned the few words here on geothermal, the potential of it, and the attitude of the people of Trafalgar. I must say, I was very, very impressed with what you did. Not saying that you did it in a way such that it was bad and you just kept quiet. That's not the plan. It's just the manner in which we approached it, which was very good. The Trade and Industry Minister spoke on a personal level to his constituents, assuring them that their best interests are vested in the success of that initiative. We are not going to pursue anything in this country that's going to be negative for our people. That is not the plan at all. And I will never stand by a government, never, because I'm a scientist myself, whereby we're going to explore energy for benefit, but there's going to be some ill effects on our people. I don't stand for that. I can never do it, because I, mean, I live in the Rose Valley, I'm here. And I'm not going to stand for that. But ladies and gentlemen, villagers or friends, be open-minded. They are the advocates on the other side of the fence who are going to be coming here and trying to poison your minds. Be open-minded of this program because countries just recently on BBC, Kenya was boasting of what they're doing. And the people were embracing it because they want to power the whole of Kenya using their geothermal energy. Why can't we use it? And we are the leaders in geothermal in the region. God has gone before us. In terms of the English-speaking Caribbean, we are the leaders. We should not allow ourselves to lag behind. We should hold that position, do it properly, and let's harvest it so we can benefit. Throughout the meeting, staff of the Employment and Small Business Support Agency made available application forms and information pamphlets for the National Employment Program. The government's National Employment Program was launched on December 2, 2013, with over 400 unemployed persons initially targeted. For more information, visit www.nep.gov.dm. Coming up in today's in-depth report, a look back at the official opening of Mass Dominic 2014. In these next few weeks, we unleash our creativity, our ingenuity, our passion for life, and the awakening of our spirit, of the spirit of our ancestors who gave us this great mass. Tourism Minister Honorable Ian Douglas addressing the official opening of Mass Dominic 2014. It was an afternoon of drumming, color, dance last Saturday in the streets of the capital as hundreds turned out to witness and participate in a parade marking the official start of Mass Dominic 2014. I urge you to keep the spirit of New Connet V grounded within us. The parade began at the Portersville Savannah and ended at the Dame Eugenia Charles Boulevard. As usual, there were some unrecognizable faces and beautiful ones too. 
there were the island's indigenous people. Some came bearing long whips, and it was a time to have fun, not too focused on footwear. But there were no traffic stops for these young chauffeurs from the St. Mary's Primary, who drove ahead of the energetic flag wavers. And what would the opening be like without the Collio Ban Mauve and the various Lapo Cabwit groups? Also on parade were the 2013 Calypso King and Carnival Queen, as well as contestants of the various competitions organized for Mass Dominic 2014. At the end of the afternoon, a review of the event by Tourism Minister Honorable Ian Douglas. I deem the carnival opening a success. The Tourism Minister is excited about Mass Dominic 2014. He already has his favorite for the Junior Monarch competition. The Irish kid is on track to win the Junior Monarch this year. Corporate communications manager at Lime Dominica, Fedina Frampton, says the telecommunications company has committed to support almost every aspect of the Realm Mass 2014, including Miss Dominica, Calypso Monarch, and Junior Monarch competitions. We are investing in the successful staging of the Miss Teen Pageant, Princess Show, Mr. Caribbean Show, various fests and other activities during the Real Mass celebrations. Minister for Culture, Youth and Sports, Honorable Justina Charles, in her remarks at the official opening of Mass Dominic 2014, reflected on the theme for this year's festivities, New Connet V. This is about the joy of living, living in peace and harmony, celebrating life, celebrating our rich culture, balancing work with pleasure, and demonstrating all this to the world. This is what our carnival, the real mass, is all about. Mayor Rosso, her worship Irene John, has appealed for peace during this carnival season. All of us wish for a great and wonderful carnival in Dominica. So all of us, responsibility to keep the carnival free from violence. Let us spread the word and discourage any kind of fighting and irresponsible behavior. Meantime, Tourism Minister Honorable Ian Douglas has issued a challenge to former Queen contestants. You need to continue to work together to encourage those who are to come, those who are to follow in your footsteps. And I'd really like to see a Carnival Queen Association being formed of all the com contestants who participate in our Queen competitions over the years. Saturday's official opening of the Realm Mass 2014 celebrations ended with performances by the Flag Wavers, Lapo Cabwit Bands and Sensei. Certainly a taste of what's ahead in the next few weeks. And that's it for the English segment of National Focus. McPherson St. Louis is up next with the Creole Highlights. Allô tout le monde, bienvenue à ces nouvelles en créole, non moi c'est McPherson saint louis Premièrement, le gouvernement Mexico a assisté Dominique Silon mauvais de l'Ege qui a bien conditionné à dommage l'année passée. Parole ça la sorti le premier ministre Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt. Silon premier ministre Skerritt, Dominique a aussi voué 500 000 dollars en effort ça là. Honorable Skerritt fait parole ça là pendant qu'il était adressé en meeting orientation en Trafalga, j'ai dit semaine passée. Et des résidents de Trafalgar qui gouvernement identifié avec un des communautés salariales qui ont bénéficié de l'assistance salariale. Le ministre étranger de Mexico, José Antonio Mid, joué et puis le premier ministre Skerritt la semaine passée, où il a discuté de l'assistance pour Dominique. Visite du ministre Mid pour la Dominique, venu après le premier ministre Skerritt, qui a joué et puis le président de Mexico, Enrique Peña Neto, en Cuba. Check ce qui est passé. À la nouvelle, le ministère de l'Éducation a continué et puis le programme pour la négion l'école qui a été mangé en l'école. 
Madame Pamela Gist en charge du programme Salam. School feeding program, c'est un programme là nous a um, ministry education qui a gain à uh, manger avec à uh, mettre manger à l'école pour les gens bénéficier. Il y a les enfants qui ca venir avec yo pani manger assez manger à uh, hot caillou avec autant fois les gens qui viennent sans boire du thé et ils prennent assez de déjeuner. Um, et les enfants qui ont mené le déjeuner, ça a mené, um, c'est comme nous avons dit en anglais, next to nothing, ce n'est pas un J. Donc, so, le programme ça a aidé maman, parce que maman a été à Kai et ils prennent pour aller faire vite avec le hustle à chez taper bouillir manger pour yon sa mener à l'école là bah c'est ces enfants là ministère d'éducation encore quand encourager par moi pour supporter un programme là pareil là nous avons demandé à l'institut ministère de l'éducation et à juste ministre nous te ca encourager par un peu pour mener provision en dans l'école là les nous pas les provision en dans l'école là c'est les nous ca dit c'est c'est mon nan qui ca bouillir manger là pour servir macaron et spaghetti et dombouya et puis et diwi nous ca nous ca mener mais nous ca gagner poisson fouet nous ni maouin qui ca mener poisson ba nous en dans l'école nous ni nous ni l'école qui ca lever poule et ve nous ca gagner ces poule ça là pour nous ça ba ces ces légion on a nouvelle, Mieroso Iron John, qui a fait parole qui est considéré bien fort, établit une occasion pour vivre des ventes de produits à yo, on dit bon, là où il a en ville, John fait parole de la pendant qu'on s'est là, débranché et puis diverses organisations, où là il a lancé un campagne pour tenir la ville propre, et des initiatives de la qui en bénéficient de vivre des là, en même temps, le monde qui a porté le radio, qui a fait ça plus facile, Passe, yo a donc en l'occasion. Mais John dit initiative là, c'est pour faire ville Wouzo à plus organisé et aussi parler contre plan pour mettre vagrants en l'occasion où là ils tapé bon outil passion. Finalement, management solid ways qu'a visé public là contre Mathieu Zodis qui voit une neuf à yo à tapé car vous ça c'est recyclable Mathieu. La parole est là, sortie de l'office de coopération, M. Florian Mitchell. Le vote à nous, nous avons c'est pour masser le recyclable matériel. Si on ne peut pas, si on ne les autres bitins hard, ou ne peut jeter, ou ne mettre ça en sac noir, et bien nous avons un vote à point. Nous avons amassé. Mais le choc là, nous avons tapé à la République de Japan, l'ambassade de Japan, qui a amassé le recyclable matériel. Deux fois par mois. Donc, il est venu mercredi ça, il peut venir l'autre mercredi, il est venu l'autre là. Mais c'est madame, ça c'est tout pour nous faire la croyole pour à présent. Moi, c'est Mac Fousson Senlos. Au revoir. Coming up next, two ways to accept the things you cannot change. Together we build, together we strive. We see it all on your government information service, Channel 7. This is the Government Information Service, bringing you all that you need to know about all that's happening in your country's development. GIS, you and your channel. We should all aim to accept the things we cannot change and in so doing, simplify our lives. One way is to do what you love, even if only on the weekends write, listen to music, or get out in nature. Whatever it is that pumps you up, do it. Then you can more easily accept for now those parts of your life that are not very inspiring. Another way is to be grateful. Make a mental gratitude list of 10 items to remind you of the truth before you meet with the facts that awful things happen. You may end up thinking that you're still awfully blessed. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. We always welcome your suggestions and your comments. 
Drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm or visit our website news.gov.dm. Friend us on our Facebook page and be sure to like our GIS Dominica fan page. You can also catch up on past National Focus newscasts on our GIS Dominica YouTube channel. On behalf of the entire news production team, I'm Mervyn Matthew. And I'm Jana Hector. Thank you so much for watching.